Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and today I've got my nine-year-old home with me and I'm also uh, babysitting one of his friends. And so I've got two little nine-year-old twerps and yes, the Digital Asset Investor is babysitting today. But when I'm babysitting, that usually means I'm sitting here doing research to do videos. So let's check this out. Top seven crypto billionaires have lost a combined $114 billion since Bitcoin, uh, its all-time high. And here's the outline of that. Looks like we're about to have a storm here in Digital Asset Investorville. Um, so you can hear it. So if you hear thunder, if you hear thunder outside, that is because you hear thunder outside. Now. Moving along, John Deaton commented on part of Brad Garlinghouse's thread from yesterday. I do see why Ripple is disliked by many of the industry players. BlockFi is laying off 20%, Coinbase laying off 18 and its employees. Ripple plans to hire 300 people in the next 12 to 18 months while spending 100 million in legal fees while fi fighting an SEC lawsuit. Um, so yeah, Ripple. We're the adults in the room, Ripple's the adults in the room, and everything else from everything I've seen has been pretty Mickey Mouse. I've been to the Bitcoin conferences and I've been to Ripple Swell. There is no comparison. Now, check this out. Bond market is flashing warning, raise interest rates or we'll do it for you. So if the bond market implodes, Houston, we have a problem. Now, this is why I keep talking about my sponsor, Glint. I don't just keep talking about it because of that, but I'm accumulating gold on my in my Glint account um, so that I so that I have spendable gold, and I'm doing it because the the with inflation and the rising interest rates and the potential of the bond market imploding, these this is the entire recipe for gold. Okay, but not just that. Um, I heard Jim Rickards one time, he said, I don't know a billionaire who doesn't own gold. This is part. So what I do is I buy physical gold and silver, and then I also buy gold in this, so I have it spendable, just in case we have a really freak out situation. Okay, I'll put a link to that, by the way, in the top of the description of this video. Coinbase CEO Brian Armstrong announced today, difficult decision to reduce the size of Coinbase team by 18%. And they covered it on CNBC. Listen to this. Ah, come on. Kate Rooney joins us now uh, with more. Uh, give it to us, Kate. <laughs> hey, Joe, that's right. This morning, Coinbase just telling employees in an email that it plans to lay off 18% of its workforce. That comes out to roughly 900 employees. CEO Brian Armstrong saying, quote, we appear to be entering a recession after a 10 plus year economic boom. Okay, you get the, you get the gist of that. Um, now, our old buddy Mike Novogratz, who, this is what I don't get about these, guy, these guys. This guy's got a Luna tattoo on his arm, which you would think would disqualify him from being a go-to guy on CNBC. But no, that doesn't disqualify you because he is one of the guys that helps them carry the narrative. So here he goes. And oh, really not that long, but I can remember Bitcoin got back to 10 or 11,000 and ran up to 14,000. And you admitted that you actually lightened up a little at 14,000, then it went back down. And so we've been talking about this at levels that, you know, 10,000, 65,000, it, it, it's, pretty staggering the you know what we've seen at this point mike it's dropped from peak to, tr to where it is now it's the fourth largest percentage drop so it's dropped a lot more than that previously and, and still was able to get all the way back to new highs you think we're seeing the same thing here but well listen, this again you said you thought, you thought 40 might big. You thought 40 might be low. You thought 30 might be low. Yes. now you're saying you think 20 might be might be a low i mean i it, well, I, this, I, 
Yeah. This is certainly more painful because the numbers were bigger, right? More money lost, uh, more infrastructure in place. And so, you know, it's a big industry all of a sudden. I think we'll see job cuts. I think the industry will, will resize itself quickly. But listen, Bitcoin will lead the markets back out of this, this Fed tightening. The moment the Fed flinches, the moment you know, how pauses because the economy is really starting to roll over. You're going to see Bitcoin explode north. Um, it was interesting. I watched the interview with Sam Druckenmiller who talked about Bitcoin potentially being one of his assets. Lots of guys I talked to uh, are seeing, you know, the next time they're going to get engaged is, you know, when they start sensing Fed's going to pause. Well, that's his prediction. But my prediction is that if Ripple wins the SEC lawsuit or comes out of that favorably, XRP will explode north. Okay, that's my call. Now, uh, crypto lending platform BlockFi has laid off 20% of its staff due to market conditions. Crypto.com is going to lay off 5%. Um, let's see what we got. Had some out in my yard. Then, let's see what else we have. $103 million worth of MicroStrategy's Bitcoin has been liquidated amid massive Bitcoin sell-off below $21,000 support. Now, folks, by the way, all this bloodshed, I don't want the bloodshed, but I can promise you this. I'm seeing the opportunity here. I am not. <laughs> I, I've learned from a few hard knocks, folks. I am not a person who is sitting here scared to death about the market because I prepared for this with i made sure i had a lot of cash prepared to for the worst case scenario just in 700 million usdc has been injected into the tron dow reserve to defend usdd peg it's not looking good now i want to remind everybody that john deaton's law firm tonight i believe it's uh let's see seven o'clock eastern time it's going to be john deaton jeremy hogan jw verrett ellie Terrett, and jason foster so that should be interesting. That's in about four hours, so that'll be worth watching. All right, then there was this. Okay, this morning, Gary Gensler was on a show, and so I put together a little clip, and I said, hey, Senator Gillibrand, Senator Loomis, are you sure you want to be the two senators that gave Ethereum free pass 2.0 after Bill Hinman's conflicts of interest at the SEC? Why is... See, this is my problem. Look, folks. I don't have to have read the whole bill. What I do know about the bill is a few things. One, Bitcoin and Ethereum are going to get the same free pass designation that Bill Hinman gave him gave them with his speech. I'm of the opinion, wait, well, who's to say that those two, because this guy, we know he was compromised. We know that he had all kinds of conflicts of interest and then none of it made any sense what he did. So in what world do you keep that same bar there instead of erasing it? What I do with a bill, if you've got good intentions, do a bill where you say, wait, no, these two, they got tr special treatment and we're not sure what went on here right now and we need to investigate it. And so, no, we're not going to give these two some special commodity designation and everything else is a potential, whatever you want to call it, ancillary asset, which I'm going to get into that in a second too. No, 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 no. Let's make it a real level playing field. I think that what these two senators are still trying to do is create Bitcoin and Ethereum and put them at their own level and make everything else subordinate. But you don't have to take my word for it because I looked up the definition of ancillary. Okay, but first watch this because this is them. It, it's, it's straightforward. Um, Congress printed with a very broad brush in 1933 and 34. If you're raising money from the public and the public's anticipating a profit based on some group of entrepreneurs, that's a security. And the public needs to be protected. And that's what Congress said. That's not what we're saying. So it's not the launch that we have. So we are going to start the Ether presale in a couple of weeks. So the Ether presale will be an opportunity for anyone to purchase Ether. Or Ether is the internal currency inside of the Ethereum system, sort of like the XRP and Rebel. Now, is there a big window of opportunity for people uh, we are, to, to get in, or yes. is there just like a one-day opportunity? No, it's something uh, we're thinking of. It might be for might be forty-five days. It might be thirty. It might be. You see, folks, you can take, uh, it doesn't matter, you name the digital asset. You can take any of them and you can say, 
setting aside the fundraising, now we don't think, now we think it's decentralized. And the problem with that measure is somebody has to decide who, Bill Hen, does Bill Hinman get to decide what's decentralized and what's not? Because I think there's a lot, a lot of people more qualified. But that's pretty disturbing that one person or group of people at the SEC is supposed to decide whether it's decentralized. How do they know? I can. I have a bigger case to prove that it's not decentralized than it is. Now listen to the rest of this. So basically, Ethereum is everything Gary Gensler just said is a security. Now he's going to talk about how lending's a security, and then I'm going to show you what all the Ethereum guys are saying about lending. Yes. Okay, so there's plenty of time, sort of yes. an incremental thing. So the earlier you go, yes. in, the earlier you get in, the, the better price you get. So seen again the lending platforms. They, they're operating a little like banks. They're saying, give us your crypto, we'll give you a big return. A bunch of people are building lending platforms on Ethereum. And right now it's going to start off as totally crypto. So you're going to lend it. You're going to be able to lend like your Ether to the, to the smart contract. The smart contract will in turn lend it out to other people, right? And it's weird. It's crypto. And, and you know, people will say, oh, but it's only for Ethereum. And I like, that's, that's not for mainstream people. But then look, you add in a stable coins. And I think stable coins will be working. And you know, you'll have some like scaled out working stable coins in a couple of years. 7%, 4.5%. How does somebody offer 4 and 3 quarters of a percent in the market today and not give a lot of disclosure and like a bank maybe have some important safety and soundness behind it? Or a pretty rich and diversified uh, series of things that you guys are doing there. Um, lending, staking, swap transactions, and then prop investing. Uh. By the way, the guy this guy's talking to is Andrew Keyes, who was with Consensus. Kind of de facto VC context. Uh, I think the thing that may have struck most people is the scale of your staking book. I believe you said over a thousand validators, 1.5 billion U.S. notional. So, so 10,000. So 10,000 validators at 32 ether per validator uh, before the staking rewards. So yeah. I mean, this makes you one of the largest staking books in the world. Yeah. Like the money market fund. You can't get four and three quarters percent of money market fund today. So what's happening behind that? And I caution the public. I think about it. Sometimes if it seems too good to be true, it just may well be too good to be true. Uh, the fascinating stuff is this permissionless ecosystem that's developing largely on Ethereum. Um, we have lending borrowing systems. We have money market systems. We have payment. So Everybody in the market is supposed to be scared of Gary Gensler because he says lending is a security. But all of the Ethereum guys are bragging about how they're lending. Okay? And he's not doing anything to them. It is This is one big huge lie. We're living the lie. And I believe because the bill, the bill itself, folks, and listen to this. This is a tweet from Cynthia Loomis today. More than 35 million Americans report owning some, of the, some form of digital assets. We're regu regulating the 21st century technology with 20th century regulations. It's time for an upgrade, and the Loomis Gillibrand plan accomplishes that. Well, the 20th century regulations she's referring to is she's basically saying well, that th that's what Gary Gensler's been doing, the SEC. These, re these re regulations are for way back in 1933. Well, that's what she's saying. But at the same time, she and Gillibrand are coming out and saying, well, Bitcoin and Ethereum, they're right out of the gate. They're going to be a commodity. And she's, she's saying that, you know, most of this is going to be controlled by the SEC, which is the 20th century regulations that she's saying we're not, we don't need to be following. It's a contradiction. It doesn't make sense. It, you're, you're starting the bill with, you're, you're presupposing the same thing that Hinman laid out, which we now know is a lie. That Ethereum's decent, somehow decentralized when it's not, and we can't see the disguised whales, it's all BS. And the fact that she's willing to make that as, as the foundation, the, right out of the gate, that gets a free pass again. Bill Hinman, Ethereum free pass 2.0, that she wants to put her name on that, is red flag city for me. Okay? Um... And then this, I'm not going to play this clip, but it's another clip from his uh, interview this morning. And John Deaton says, Gary Gensler implicitly concedes that Bitcoin and Ethereum are commodities. Now in this clip, he doesn't come out and say Ethereum is a commodity, but he re refers to his, prede his, his predecessors at the SEC. In other words, Gary's been getting pressure from Gillibrand and Loomis 
that, hey, we, we've, we've gone out here and said that you said behind closed doors that Ethereum's not a security. We need a little support here. And he, he went about as far as I think he can go is what he did. I think he was covering his butt and theirs. Now, here's the problem. Listen to this clip. Because Bitcoin and Ether are far more mature. They're entirely decentralized. There's a threshold of how much maturity you've had. You don't know that they're entirely decentralized because of the disguised whales. The ownership can be very centralized, and my hunch is that it is. But they don't know that. That's the point. Is There's no way to know that. The only company that has been transparent with all this is Ripple. They've shown exactly what, what it is and where it is. And these women are putting a bill out there and they're presupposing that Ethereum is, is entirely decentralized. And they're acting like Ethereum came out before Ripple and XRP did. And it's just not true. This, this, this is, I'm telling you, this stinks. The, the bill, the fact that the, this is in the bill makes the bill reek before you even get into what else is in the bill. But here's what else is in the bill. They refer to Bitcoin and Ethereum commodities. And then you're going to have these, these other ancillary assets. Well, words mean things. And the definition of ancillary, the first thing it says in Webster's Dictionary is subordinate, subsidiary. In other words, this is the same thing Joseph Lubin was doing. It's creating your own reality. It's just flat out lying. And that is that somehow Bitcoin and Ethereum are on this pedestal. They're up here. And like Joseph Lubin says, this is a foundation trust layer. That's what he's been trying to sell this with words because he thought he could create his own reality. He didn't count on truth tellers out here. So word through words, he thought that he could craft the reality. That's the whole point. And that's what they're doing in this bill with this ancillary assets word. Once they, once they get this in the bill, then all of a sudden, oh, well, yeah, ancillary, that means subordinate. All other digital assets are subordinate. When the truth is, and the reality is, XRP and XLM are far superior than Bitcoin and Ethereum. Far superior. And they actually work. And many others, like Cardano, actually work. That's, but see, this, that's what this is. This is all regulatory capture, folks. They're trying to use words to, to lay this whole industry out. Now, I went and found two, uh, I've, got, I've got more of them, but two of the clips I wanna play for you, okay? This is Joseph Hall, he's a partner at Davis Polk. He was in a video back in early 2021 where he was talking with some guys about the XR, the Ripple case. This right here, John Deaton from day one said that this lawsuit was a weapon. I want you to listen to this. It, once, once something's a security, um, we can, I can draft a registration statement, I can draft a prospectus for it, but once it's a security, it can't be used. Um, because blockchain tokens, by definition, need to move around from wallet to wallet, person to person on a blockchain. Um, and in the case of XRP, you know, they have to move from, uh, you know, from a sending bank to a receiving bank over a blockchain. But once something's a security, it can't move that way. Um, the entire um, so the, the entire securities regulatory apparatus in this country um, uh, is is pervasive and all encompassing. It applies to everybody who, who, who deals in securities um, as a business. And you know, for example, if, if something's a security, that means it can't trade on Coinbase. Um, you know, can't it can't it can't. So a digital asset that's a security suddenly it can't be trading on Coinbase alongside um, Bitcoin and Ether. Um, it has to trade on a national securities exchange like the, S, uh, the NYSE or NASDAQ. And today there is no national securities exchange where you can trade a digital asset. And it has to move from, from it, it only, you know, basically if you're, if you're going to be, if you're going to be in the business of sort of touching these things on a customer basis, you've got to be registered as a broker dealer. Um, so it's, to me, it's just, it's, it's vastly simplifying things to say, oh, look, all we want them to do is register it give disclosure because once you do that you've got an asset that's effectively not usable anymore do you see the trap this was a trap folks this was a planned this this was a planned weapon that's what this was john deaton is a thousand percent right but that's not the only clip that you need to see okay because john 
Remember, John's always said he the reason he got in the fight is because the SEC, see, they had the SEC had to call XRP itself a security, not what you did back in 2013's a security. They had to call XRP itself a security in order to not let Ripple, if Ripple tried to settle the case or tried to make the case go away, as long as the SEC would not agree to make that go away, the idea that XRP is a security now, the way it's moving around in the market right now, see, that's what keeps Ripple from ever doing business with this, their intended use case in the United States. And that is why all these shady people that were behind this and continue to be behind it have to be held account accountable. That's why what Empower is doing and what John Deaton is doing is so important is because this is not the United States of America. This is shade ball central right here what's going on. This is, th these, are, these are businesses and governments getting together to try to block out their competition. That is what this is. And don't take my word for it. You listen to what this guy said. Bill Hinman, the former director of the Division of Corporation Finance, which is the SEC division that, you know, you know really sort of weighs in on, quest on this question is, you know, is, is, that, is that orange a security or not? Um, and a speech that he made, um, in the 2017 time frame, he raised the possibility that Ether, Ethereum, um, had started out as a security but had morphed into um, a non-security. And there, you know, I can go into all the sort of technical reasons why that would be, but, but he, he did raise that possibility, and it's something that the that the um, you know that the that the community has really seized on. And so, a, a way that that the XRP case might have been settled um, would have been to focus in on the conduct in, in, the, in the 2013 timeframe and um, you know, charge, you know, charge Ripple Labs with, with violations of the securities laws in the 2013 timeframe, but say nothing at all about the current status of Ripple uh, under the idea that, that um, you know, while those initial sales may have been problematic, that the asset itself um, is not a security. Um, but when we saw the complaint that was filed back at the end of December, it very clearly said in, in paragraph eight, um, you know, right up, right up front, that current sales of the asset, you know, continue to be illegal, unregistered securities offerings. So, I think, you know, if there if there were any room for a settlement, and I certainly have no idea about what paragraph sort of, eight. Um, you know, discussions may have gone on before or what discussions may be going on now. I think the shape of a settlement, you know, might be along the lines of the SEC um, getting their pound of flesh for, you know, the 2013 sales, 2014 sales, but then saying nothing at all about whether uh, current sales um, are, are problematic and also not getting an injunction against current sales. And it strikes me that that, you know, for, from Ripple's perspective, this is existential, I think. You know, if, if, at least to the extent that they want to, you know, do a business that's, that's touching the United States. Um, and, and so, um, you know, I don't know why they would settle a, a case um, uh, with the SEC, um, um, you know, un, un, unless they were able to, you know, live another day. Um, and, you know, you can could, you could see them being okay with a settlement where the question of its current status is just left unresolved and the sec could you know could could walk away with you know a lot of money um and and you know pat themselves on the back for having you know enforced the federal securities laws and gotten a big recovery for investors um but it could have left unadjudicated the status of whether or not today xrp is a security and I think that that would have been um, a settlement that um, you know that people would have um, uh, liked. I mean, it, it obviously splits the baby. And I don't think the SEC would have settled with a statement that today XRP is not a security. But I'd rather you know I don't think you need to push them on that. I think you can leave that and fight it. You know, fight that at a later time. Folks, I'm going to leave you with this. It, in, if we still have a United States of America, this must be investigated because 
I've been making videos on this for a year, and folks, we if this isn't investigated, we really don't even have a country anymore. We just don't. This is just a one big pile of corruption dung. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and tell your friends and family to tell these you-know-what politicians to do their freaking job and investigate Bill Hinman, Jay Clayton, and the SEC because there's nobody on this planet that I can see that deserves it more because this is some shady stuff.